Hey guys, VBad here with another V plays, and yes, I'm flying that filthy DB605 tier 6 premium Spitfire. The Spitfire that is essentially the same as what you'd get with the Brit line and the non premium version, but it gets more altitude. I remember back in the day when premium tanks and stuff and World of Tanks were a lesser version of their brethren, but you got more experience and the advantages of crew training, but power creep is power creep. And currently there's a bundle out to pick up two Spitfires. It's this one and then the Spitfire Mark 1A. The 1A actually used to be free when 2.0 came out they had a deal let's do that we want we want everybody in here um and i was fortunate enough to find the code even like six months after the fact and it was still active now don't bother looking for it now it stopped working last i checked but that one is almost exactly what you'd be getting for the tier 5 version of the Spitfire anyways. It's going to have the 8 Browning 303s, essentially light machine guns. Okay, let's... Oh, he's not looking at us. Cool. Now this still has four of those light machine guns, which allows it to be able to get good fire chance. And then we can... Get him. There we go. But we also got the reach of the 20s, which is kind of nice. Like I said, we've got really good altitude on this thing. It probably shouldn't be doing what it's doing most of the time. Uh, but we're going to try and intercept a B-17 Delta here. Come on back. I know he's coming back. So, I do feel cheesy flying this aircraft right now, um, and I'm sure there'll be somebody in the comments that talks about how they see people flying these overpowered planes all the time. And I'm, I'm inclined to agree. Uh, it's an overpowered aircraft, but for those of you that are still starting out, you're, you're new to the game, this is a good way to learn how to play, is flying these Spitfires. That's why I recommend in my beginner's guide, this is probably what you want to start out in, is the Spitfire line. So here we are with a premium version of those aircraft available. I feel foolish to not tell you, come on, oh, caught us out. But I'd be foolish to tell you not to pick this up just because there's a bias against it, because it's overpowered. Isn't that the reason to pick it up? Because if you're a newer player and you're struggling to make credits, this is a totally viable option and you're getting two for what's essentially the price of one and you're also getting a thousand gold. So all good things. Um, my only counter to this package is that I don't fly these that often. In fact, I, I don't fly them for the very reasons I just mentioned. I feel like it you know, kind of deadens a lot of my skills because I've gotten past that early stage of learning what zones to go to, i.e. this one. But, let's actually get some defense in here, but the point I'm trying to make here is that while tier 6 premiums are nice, and we can use it as a crew trainer, really what you want is a tier A premium. Oh, don't you hit me with that big old fat ant gun, there we go gun and cannon, but there's an even easier way to get a tier A premium than people probably initially realize. Tier A premium, boop, you can get the vampire. There's those cannons doing their work. And while it is a bit of a, a slog to get through all of the required missions for it, by the time you're in a position to be able to do them because it does require certain aircraft, you've figured out a lot of the mechanics of the game, you're better, you probably wouldn't struggle as much trying to get some of those missions done. So I feel like it's fair to recommend really putting everything you got into getting that vampire. And the $20 that this bundle is, if you were so inclined to try and pick this aircraft up, it's... Oh, come on. Can we get this guy? Focus mode. Oh. It's 
slam the boost, get the gun around. There we go. Really just throw this thing into combat, can't we? Um, but you could pick up the vampire that much faster by using the current availability to purchase tokens for gold to get through those really pesky missions like getting a Gabreski or something like that. If I dive down, I'm forcing him to go towards the ground. That's the goal here. Did he just crash? I think he did. We're actually doing like a spiral maneuver around him right now. Don't let these things fool you, they're actually really maneuverable. Come on, 20s. There we go. Oof. But now here we are doing the altitude fighter thing. So cheesy. But yeah, getting that vampire, that's going to be where you'll get a lot more credits with a tier 8, much more bang for your buck, and you've probably already got a Spitfire all kitted out, or a Spitfire pilot all kitted out that you can throw into the vampire, getting yourself even more credits from having such a highly skilled pilot in that aircraft. So, I, if I were to push to say what would be my favored direction or option. Oh, hey, we got to look out for our allies here. This is a solid bundle. If you don't plan on ever getting the vampire or you just don't feel like you're ever going to have the skill to get it, this isn't a bad way to go. And I'd understand if you wanted to. But I've never heard anybody complain about the vampire. And it isn't overpowered, it's just a very good all-around aircraft. Oh, that's a bot. Okay, I didn't want to steal the kill. Am I really going to do this? Yeah, there's the fog wolf. Let's go for it. Got him. That squall line too? Yeah, I think it was. He'll either come back or he'll be dead. Uh, we got a couple of heavies vectoring in. Nice. Man, he really likes those head-ons, doesn't he? Oh, jeez. He's getting us into an energy fight in the climb. Smart move. This is how you beat Spitfires, by the way, is drawing people straight up. So, like I said, this is... I was barely concentrating. We got 14,990 personal points. Your mileage may vary, but I've been playing this game for a while now. I think I'm almost up to 7,000 battles. And... It, it was barely, barely an effort. Like, I just threw this game together at the last minute at the end of my night because I realized I didn't post a video today. So here it is. Uh, there's two different versions of the Spitfire being sold together as a bundle. Um, not a bad option. I think it's it's a good, yeah, look at this, 4% towards my overall specialization. Jeez, man. Feels so cheese about that. But the point is, maybe for a new player, if you didn't think that you'd ever want to put more effort into maybe getting uh, a tier eight, especially for the cost, the price point's really high. Um, but you, this thing, you can get through those missions. So take a look at those missions, see what it's going to take to get you into this aircraft. And if the only thing's holding you up, the only thing holding you up is going to be you know, a few tokens here and there to be able to skip some of the harder missions, 
then you might as well do the the gold purchase over here uh to convert for tokens it's going to take 50 gold per token so if we were to see what is your thousand gold get you if you were to convert that it'll get you 20 tokens that's uh nearly enough to be able to get a skip uh for 20 dollars uh i want to say you're going to be able to get a lot more than that for gold so if you were to just do a straight gold purchase for the same amount your call. Uh, I don't like to tell people how to spend their money, but if you were thinking about throwing $20 at the game for those two Spitfires, they're good if you like Spitfires. But I think you're you're missing an opportunity to get closer to a very nasty aircraft with 420s, it's jet powered, the thing is absolutely blitzing fast with decent maneuverability and it also looks awesome. Uh, and it's a it's a vampire bat. <laughs> Looks pretty cool to me. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I hope this helps you make a decision if you were on the fence as to whether or not you wanted to pick up the Spitfire or not. It's Spitfire bundle rather. Uh, but again, it's it's your choice. And as always, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Bye.